Hey, it's me, I'm on the edge of my seat here, back again with another brand new video. So here we are no damaging all the boss fights in Kiwami 2, starting off with Daigo. And just like the first game, we are not going to give him a chance to retaliate. However, this strat gives him even less time to retaliate than in the second game. Cause in the second game, he was really easy, but I had to like combo him and all that. You know, he sometimes blocked at this. This is the strat you're gonna see throughout the entire video. Not for every boss, because some boss fights are a little tricky and don't allow me to perform this little maneuver I'm doing here, but for most 1v1 boss fights and also quite a bit of the group fights, I will be using this tactic because it is the best tactic in the game. Because Kiwami 2, it's a little tricky to combo boss fights. However, this little quick step spam is one of the is probably one of the only ways to deal consistent damage over and over and over. So yeah, you're gonna see that quite a bit. Daigo here, well yeah, he didn't stand much of a chance. So here is Peacock Man. I thought I'd bring him back, even though I don't really do much with him. Just a couple combos here and there, a few displays of the Dragon Engine's physics. There's no real strat to this guy. I'm just kind of beating him up because he's like a standard enemy. I don't know some strats will come in later, but uh, right now I'm just kind of, you know, just beating him up. Now here is Ryuji on his stage without any reflective floors. A bit of a shame because you know the PS2 game had it and the PS4 game doesn't, but you know whatever, we're past that. So anyways, we're doing the same thing we did with Daigo. And Ryuji is even easier because, well I mean, okay so usually the way this quick step uh, strategy works is that uh, so Kiwami 2 added this new move from like they added a new move to Yakuza 6 combat system called you know like the you pretty much hold square and you can do like a beast like a little beast combo in the beginning but you just do that however they did not account how this would break Kiwami 2 because you can immediately dodge cancel out of that like beast punch into a bunch of quick steps however once you do one quick step the enemy is stunned however follow up with another one the enemy is stunned again repeat this over and over in fast succession succession and the enemy can't retaliate they are stuck in that loop however there are ways they can break out of that loop one is if you're a little too slow or maybe like miss a dodge or something or maybe if you like start trying to actually combo them they might there might be a chance to break out or they could splat against the wall now for this fight this isn't too much of an issue because ryuji okay so you definitely want to start the fight by doing that because that's when they're the most vulnerable to being spammed because they can't really block it or defend or dodge you know because like i mean if you're in the middle of a fight and try to do it at some point they could dodge it they could block it okay they could break their block and you don't want that because if it breaks their block you can't spam them because you'll try to spam them but they'll, then they'll retaliate at a certain point you want to make sure that the attack lands it has a nice meaty punch not like the shield breaking like sound you want the big meaty punch and damage because then you know you're like uh you're you're scot-free you're you're ready to go however that doesn't always work but however for ryuji it is really easy because he you can like the at the end of his like full combo you can do it pretty reliably and then he has that one move where he just kind of like shouts and like runs to grab you that move He's just like standing around and not doing much of anything and gives you a great time to get back into it. Now here is a Kiwami 2 group fight. Now group fights in Kiwami 2 are very frustrating because, well, enemy telegraphs. Oh boy. Uh, I think this is actually something which I didn't mention in my Kiwami ramp video. But uh, okay, so Yakuza, the Yakuza series doesn't really have the best um, enemy telegraphs. And this, I think this is true since like Yakuza 3. Which kind of, I don't know, like group battles for like no damage could be a little annoying because some enemies just immediately attack without telegraphing their attacks. So it's like, 
Oh, bro, come on. I mean, I don't know, like in the PS2 Yakuza games, they were a little bit more lenient on this because your, I don't know, your attack speed was a little bit clunkier. Like in one, they kind of, they can, they can be fast, but they're a little bit more lenient with it. And well, two, you're a bit faster, but they kind of, they're a bit faster, so they make enemy attacks a bit faster, but still, they, they have a tendency to telegraph what they do. In three, some enemies just immediately attack, like, I don't know, look at some of Yakuza 3's boss fights, like, I don't know, uh, the dude you fight in the strip club, that dude's attacks just come out immediately, you cannot get close to that guy, or he'll just immediately attack you for no damage. I mean, like, with boss fights, there's ways to deal with it, but, like, in group battles, it can be a bit annoying to suddenly be clipped by a dude who just immediately got a hit on you. And the enemy attacks just keep getting faster and faster. Like, I mean, Yakuza 4, 5, 0, they all kind of have a bit, of, a few enemies which are a bit of a pain in the ass just because they don't telegraph their attacks. But there is a bit of an upside to this that usually you could bait enemies into doing an attack a little far away from you. However, when we switched to the Dragon Engine in 6 and Kiwami 2, something changed. Enemies just do not want to attack from far away. There is no like enemy like saying Kiwami one who will like miss who will do a combo that'll drag him across the room. No, he doesn't do that anymore. He has to get close to you and then he will immediately do the attack. No, you just can't react to it. It's like insane. Take this gun guy, for example. This guy shows up throughout multiple parts of the game and he is a complete nuisance to deal with. His attacks come out so fast. His worst attack easily is that little dodge to the side and like he dodges to the side and shoots it's like a straight second to react it's so infuriating and the thing is that guy has high defense too you can't combo him one of his only openings is for him to like do his attack and then you quick step attack him to like launch him into the ground like during that fight i got really lucky they was just dodging around and i somehow managed to like not get shot which is really helpful and also my dudes who were helping me out during that fight were being really helpful now anyways here's the dude from the coliseum he really isn't all that notable he's just kind of copying like that heavy style with like the heavy weapon which most enemies have which i think came from either yakuza 5 or yakuza ishin oh yeah i mean yeah i guess kiwami 2 like most of the boss fights just copying fighting styles from previous games i don't know like some of them i can notice some of them i can't i don't know maybe i'll point it out if i see it like, I forget if Daigo Dojima's style is unique or not. I don't know what boss fight has his fighting style. Ryuji is like a mix of unique moves and a uh, dude from 6. The big, like, uh, the, the assassin dude. And, well, yeah, this dude was copying, like, a dude from Ishin who, like, had a big, big mallet. I mean, Gary Buster's Holmes. I mean, Kiwami 1, he was a copy of the final boss fight of 5. I forget if that also applies here. I'd have to see his moves a little more. Yeah, yeah, it's the same dude as from 5. So yeah, a bit of a shame, you know, Gary Buster Holmes is a pretty rad guy, just wish he wasn't a copy of... From Yakuza 5, but oh well. And here is Majima. I hate this fight so much. Ah! Like, this, okay, it's pretty much just the exact same fight from Kiwami 1 where he has the knife, except in Kiwami 1 you had way more tools to deal with him. And well, yeah, in Kiwami 1, he was tricky. So, like, here, where you're even more limited... Like, okay, what I mean by limited, I don't know. I guess I'd have to, like, explain that. Okay, so, in Kiwami 1, like, uh, Majima has a bunch of, like, super armor, which is really hard to deal with. You can't combo him normally. Usually, what you have to do to, like, get Majima to, like, you know, behave in, like, Kiwami 1 when he has the knife is to use rush style, parry his attacks, kind of, like, tap his back until he's, like, vulnerable or stunned. Or like, I don't know, like tap his back with like rush punches, you know, like one, 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 until you get into a position where you can immediately switch into dragon. You do a full combo there, maybe a grab combo to like launch him on the ground, or maybe you do like a full combo, quick step attack into like another style so you can keep comboing him for like more points. But that's a little tricky. That's like really high, high level stuff. Usually you just want to do like a rush, then like a full dragon combo, like a little maybe grab to add a little more damage, and then just kind of go from there. 
like there's ways to like kind of put him into a position where you can actually like combo him but here you the parry you have like doesn't allow you to actually like lead to any good combos you don't really have a rush style equivalent where you can like tap at him for more damage i mean you could do like this quick like this beast charge punch quick step attack spam however this stage does us no favors for that because he usually gets splatted onto a wall really easily and he does not have many openings to like beast spam him like his attacks all he usually tends to do mostly dodge out of his attacks and immediately go into an attack or he could just block it and immediately go into attack he retaliates to almost anything you do and he's just really unpredictable sometimes the combo works sometimes he won't and then there's his attacks which tend to go all across the room they just immediately get you like, oh yeah, I guess another thing I don't like about Kiwami 2 is like combos. Is it dodge kind of feels like ass? Like the dodge kind of has a, has a thing where like it kind of like gravitates towards the enemy when they're doing a combo. You don't feel like you're actually dodging the attack. You're kind of like swaying away, but the enemy just like hones in on you. It's so annoying. But anyways, the way I dealt with Majima in this fight is that for the first phase, I mostly just used Tiger Drops because it was pretty much the only like consistent way to do it. Because I kind of messed up the beast charge like punch spam thing I do in the beginning. And then when he's in heat mode, he's a little easier because he does his full combo. And, on, and at the end of his full combo, there is a consistent way to like do the beast charge, like quick step punch. I don't know, I need to come up with a better name for that. Like, I don't know, like the dash punch? Yeah, like the dash, the dash punch spam. Maybe I'll just call it that. Yeah, because like, like when Majima's in heat mode, he's actually way easier to deal with. Because that full combo of his, at the end of it, you can actually perform the dash punch like maneuver consistent which is really nice it's just kind of weird because like his first phase is awful and i hate dealing with it so anyway here's the 16-bit brothers this fight was also really annoying because well okay so you have the brother with a really big health bar who can just love showing up on you and then you have a group which could sometimes just kind of clip you out of nowhere and it's just like wow wow that's, that's great i love that but i don't know the one way i found to deal with is that this brother here has this one attack that's really easy to tiger drop so i usually just bait it out like usually yeah, like I bait it out. Like I, I do a punch to kind of make him dodge, and he'll usually, most of the time, do that attack where he goes for the like really slow punch, where I can immediately boop, pop, tiger drop, boom, right there. Yeah, I like that a lot. Also, I don't really like the downgrade here from uh, Yakuza 2's arena, which is like this big like ma like big like key like I don't know like damn, like a square arena. Like, you know, you're kind of going here to just like this tiny parking lot where you're kind of cramped and can't do anything about it. However, I do prefer how uh, enemies aren't constantly spawning here like they were in uh, Yakuza 2's like, fight. Because in Yakuza 2's fight, there were just enemies always coming out. However, I did notice that actually enemies do spawn in this fight. They just don't spawn as frequently as they did in Yakuza 2. And also, these enemies aren't as much, as much of a pushover as the ones in Yakuza 2. They spawn so much that like they made their health bars really tiny so they're just really easy to deal with they just kept coming and coming and coming all these guys there's only like i don't know two or four guys that like spawn afterwards i don't know i don't really know exactly the ai or like the structure of like the minion spawnings i just know that a couple guys show up after i took out the two brothers also i'm not really sure if the two brothers dictate how many guys spawn like i don't know maybe you take out all the enemies maybe more guys will come i haven't tested it out. i i really don't know on that part and here is Man in Black. Wow, this guy is awful. <laughs> and the only way I, I was able to deal with him was with the quick step attacks. Because the dash punch like spam. However, dash punching this guy is actually somewhat hard. Because the arena you're in just makes it really easy to splat him against the wall. And once he's splat against the wall, he'll like, uh, he'll like dodge out of it and then immediately go into like attacking. However, once he goes into attacking, he has very few openings for the dash punch combo. Like, his attacks are all very quick. They usually don't come out unless you are really close to him. That lovely, like, enemy telegraphing, you know, it, it's there. It, it sucks, but oh well. By the way, this is a really easy form. The hard form comes later when he goes into heat mode and pulls out the knife boots. Like, he's a little harder there, but I do the same strategy to, like, keep him at bay. Oh yeah, so again, this fight is really interesting, and I did mention this in my Yakuza 2, like, no damage video. But pretty much this guy kind of has all, pretty much has, like, all the same moves as he did originally in the original game. But in the original game, he's nowhere near as hard as he is in here. And that's because Kiwami 2 is, like, I don't know, the Dragon Engine, like, they're pretty much, like, the, uh, I don't know how to explain it, but pretty much the way they adapted the Dragon Engine to this fighting style just makes it really annoying because... 
the dude always blocks in the original game. However, blocking in the original game just is a minor inconvenience. You know, like you tap him and you're not dealing damage. It's like, damn, this fight is tedious. However, in this game, when an enemy blocks your attack, that's an active, like, form of aggression because when an enemy blocks your attack, you are staggered. You're slowed down. And then, immediately afterwards, the enemy could retaliate. And this guy, when he blocks your attack, he will immediately retaliate. And his fast comes out fast. Sometimes it's so fast you can't dodge out of it. And when he has his little knife boots, you can't block it. Or they could, or immediately after, they could just grab you, which, you know, you can't block. I mean, you can dodge from it, but sometimes you can't block from it. It's just, there was an immediate reaction once they block your attacks, and you're slowed down, so the only way to do it is dodge. It's annoying. It's really annoying. I don't like how, 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 like, hitting an enemy when they block, like, staggers you, like you're hitting a sword off a wall. I think it's one of the worst decisions they've made in the, in the combat system. I talked about it in my Kiwami 2, Kiwami rant video. I do not like it. I despise this change so much. Anyways, here's another awful fight, but then again, this fight was also awful in the original game because two dudes who are constantly aggroing you in a really tight space just is not that fun. And here, it's uh, it's still awful, but they decided that'd be really cool if they copied uh, Kuze's and Shibusawa's fighting styles. Hey, do you want to fight those two guys in the same room, in a tiny-ass cramped room? That'd be really fun, wouldn't it? No, no, it wouldn't. It would suck ass. But hey, both fights suck ass, you know, it's not like the remake did anything worse. But I found a way to deal with it just by kind of expanding the furniture and also I raised my attack. Oh yeah, I should probably mention that, I don't know, I've been rambling about the game so much that maybe I should specify some more stuff about what what the hell's going on in the video. So, so yeah, one little neat thing I thought I'd do for this video since I don't, since like having a fully maxed out Kiryu kind of makes you a little too OP is, I decided to like lower my stats a bit for these fights. So if you see in the top left corner, I did not upgrade my health bar or my heat bar once. They they are still at a hundred. They have not been upgraded at all because well for the for the health bar thing, uh, for no damage. If you take damage, you have to die. And if I raise my health bar anymore, dying would take forever. It would be extremely tedious. However, if I keep my health bar really low, I can die somewhat quickly, which means I can which means I can retry the fights a lot quicker, which makes it a lot less tedious. And for the heat bar thing, I just thought it'd be neat because uh, it kind of limits your like dragon uh, extreme heat mode capabilities because you only can you can only really do one heat action, and also it means I can go into it faster. So, like you know, it's kind of like a set. Uh, damn, what's the word? It's like risk reward, high high risk, high reward. I don't know. But anyways, pretty much I can go into it faster, but I have less. I don't know. It's like a neat little neat little system. I like it. Yeah, I guess like one thing I really like about Kiwami 2 and Yakuza 6 are their upgrade systems. No, I don't like how I have to. I don't really like how I have to eat to like upgrade. I think that's really stupid and lame. However, I love how all your upgrades are separated into combat moves and then stats, so I can get all the really cool combat moves and then keep my stats low. So you know I can have all that like high level play moves without having without becoming like extremely overpowered, like um, zero or like in zero and stuff. So anyways, here's Hayashi, you know, I mean, I complained about this fight, you know, I don't like how they removed his awesome music, I don't like how the QTEs translate, <laughs> that, that final QTE is just really awkward, and the sound design just isn't as crisp, however, this is one of the better fights in Kiwami 2, he's copying Babiba, ba 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 from Yakuza 5, who I really like in that game, so you know. I mean, if they translate him to other games, he'll probably still be good, but however, Hayashi's just kind of a more annoying version of him. However, this dash punch spam kind of negates a lot of my annoyances. But Hayashi does have some pretty good openings just to, like, uh, stagger him, like that little kick he does. It's like, the beast punch him when he's done with that kick, and you can go into the dash punch spam pretty, uh, re relatively safe. It's really nice. And when he goes into the pipes, I was dreading that phase because I thought he'd be impossible to deal with. But he has another attack, which I can take advantage of once he gets the pipes, which is really cool. You'll see what I mean in a bit. Here. 
So yeah, Hayashi with the pipes, you don't want to mess with him too much because, you know, hit him too much and he'll go into like that spinny move he does where he just stands in one place and that move is dangerous. However, he does this one attack. I hope he does it soon so I can demonstrate it. That attack, you can beast punch him and then go into the dash punch spam really safely and he does not break out of it unless you splat him against the wall or... Well, the thing with this maneuver is that pretty much it's kind of a tricky thing to do with your hands. So you pretty much have to be locked onto the enemy. You have to be holding square, let go square, immediately dash punch means you need to press X and then press triangle to do the dash punch. And you just gotta keep keep, keep like pressing uh keep pressing uh, the the X and and triangle over and over and over. But also you have to keep holding the control stick forward because. I don't know, like, uh, sometimes, like, my, sometimes I thought the game was being a little unresponsive, or sometimes uh, the, dash, the dash command just would not prompt, or the punch would just not come out, and I would just do, like, a, a weird little ephemeral kick, which was definitely a shame, because once you do that kick, your little spam is over, man. Like, it, your dreams are dead, and you do not want that for the man in black fight. But for, the, for these other fights, there's ways to deal around them, especially Hayashi, because he has that one attack, and you can kind of get back into the rhythm of things. But I think one thing which kind of makes it a little unresponsive is if you are not holding the control stick forward, uh, the attack just won't work. And also you have to be constantly locked on to because if you're not locked on, I don't think it's going to be as effective. Then again, I don't think any of these are hard and true facts as I, I, I didn't data mine the game or anything, but it's just kind of observations I like thought about while playing it. <laughs> Oh yeah, you're gonna see Xbox controller prompts because I'm playing this on PC. And another thing you should know is that by PC, I mean my laptop. <laughs> so if you're wondering why the resolution is so weird, it's because I downscaled the game uh, quite a bit. I still think I ran the game at a higher resolution than the console versions. However, I'm gonna have to be upfront and say that this is not on the quality of the console version because I set all the graphics to low. <laughs> Uh, my laptop uh, has a bit of a hard time running Kiwami 2, so I kind of just set everything to low because I thought it'd be funny. And also just to make the game run smoother. So yeah, if you're wondering why, I don't know, like some of uh, Kiryu and Majima's abs are going to be a little bit low poly, yeah, that's why. And also why the footage looks a little low poly. As for this resolution, honestly, I don't know, like when I was running OBS, I was messing around with so many different resolutions. And if I went any higher than 720p, the game would just turn, the, the footage would turn into a slideshow. It was really, it was really difficult to deal with. But anyways, yeah. I have this footage, I have these weird bars on the side, and honestly, I just don't know. I'm not, I, I need a little more screws to OBS. Oh yeah, so anyways, uh, this fight, uh, this is just a group fight. However, there is two, two dudes with guns, which make it very annoying. I don't know, like, I get rid of the first guy with my Dragon Kiryu with Extreme Heat Mode, and then the other guy, I just have to be careful and, like, try to take out without the knife or the hand-to-hand -hand guy like killing me however Karu here is really useful she deals good damage like uh when i'm in a fight with like ai partners they actually fight pretty good they're the next fight coming up uh daigo really pulls his way my boy daigo learns from like i don't know me beating his ass in the first fight and he really he really helps out like he's the reason why like i know damage the the boss fight is coming up next and uh, i really like this kick check out this kick boom <laughs> she just kicked him right into the bed. Oh my god, man, it's crazy. So here is the Go Ryu clan fight, which is not in the rain. Why does Kiwami 2 remove the rain? What's wrong with you? So yeah, anyway, so okay, back to the fight. So this guy is extremely tricky because, uh, I don't know. Uh, so Ishin, Ishin came out. Ishin was a great game where... Where, you know, it's like Yakuza, but you use a sword, and it's one of the best games in the series. However, uh, none of those boss fights work when you don't have swords. Or the b combat styles from Ishin. Like, they copied some of those movesets into Zero and Kiwami 2, and there are some of the most annoying fights to deal with in that game. And then they decided to do the same thing in the Dragon Engine, and it is awful. Like, some of the worst mini-boss fights in 6 were just those, like, dudes they copied from Ishin. And here's another guy who is copying a boss fight style from Ishin. He's copying Akiyama from Ishin, who is one of the fastest, who has some of the fastest combos in that game. And he was tricky to deal with in Ishin. Imagine dealing with him in the Dragon Engine. 
it's like, oh man, like his attack, like he has to bait out his attacks, but they come out extremely quickly. He, he, they come out extremely quickly. He goes, he like, his attacks cover so much range. You could be dodging and he could like hit you at another point. That's why I'm running so much because that guy goes far. Look at, oh man. And you can't even like beast charge him because he loves to cancel out of his combos. He'll be like doing some hits and suddenly, oh, I'm just going to stop. I'm just gonna stop. And you know, that was tricky to deal with in Ishin. Even worse to deal with in here. He tends to dodge out of most of his attacks. Like, he's dodgy, he's quick, he's fast. He just, I hate this guy so much. So I just kinda let Daigo do most of the work. <laughs> um, just kinda like taking out some of the other guys. You know, I'm trying to get a hit on this guy, but what I realized is that Daigo is just kinda pulling most of the weight. So I just kinda let him do his thing at a certain point. But look at that. He's, he's, you know, he's dealing his way. It's pretty cool. Oh wait, I didn't fully explain my damage thing, bro. Oh man, <laughs> I am getting rambled up here. So, okay, I mentioned that I kept my health and my heat bar low. Another thing, I another stat I kept really low was my attack. For most of these fights, my attack is at 140 because I feel if I upgraded my attack anymore, it'd be really OP. However, there might be one or two fights where I upgraded to. 200, uh, 201 because I find those fights awful. Uh, one of those fights is the Jinguan brothers. I upgraded my attack to 201 with through the use of, well, upgrading my attack stat and some equipment that raised my attack for that fight specifically because that fight is terrible. I hate that fight so much. It's such garbage. I'll get into any other fights where I upgrade my uh, attack stat. But anyways, I did not do it for Shindo here because Shindo is a really nice guy. And he's another boss fight moveset from Ishin, which is a shame. He's not copying Nishiki anymore, which is a bit weird. He's copying like this dude you fight in the finale of Ishin. But yeah, I thought he'd be really tricky to deal with. But actually, that little combo he does is a great opener to do this dash punch spam. Man, dash, da dash, punch, spam. That mo that, that word gets really ra wrapped up in the tongue. It's like little, little, little tongue twister right there. But yeah, that combo is just a really great opener to go into dash, punch, spam. So yeah, it's just... Yeah, this guy's a lot nicer than I thought he'd be. I thought he'd be one of the more annoying fights because... You know, if he blocks your attack, he can immediately retaliate. But yeah, he's actually not that bad. I, I screw him over here. This is not the same attempt as the other no damage I did on this channel. This is actually a new attempt because I could do it faster and I did do it faster like that other fight took me like what four or five minutes to do this took me like three minutes so that's pretty epic and love look at him he's beautiful he's doing that combo and I'm just going straight into him he's he's such a good boy I mean I don't know he wants to screw Daigo's mom or whatever but I, don't know. I think I think he's not that bad he's not that bad and yeah I mean this is one of those times where I really like the use of the Dragon Engine where in the original fight, uh, every time you transition from an area there's like a loading screen, but here it's like seamless and I think it adds a really nice element to the fight, just a shame that he's a bit easy. You know, if you have your attack stat really high, like your heat damage will just immediately like negate the first and second phases, but you know, my strategy here kind of negates everything about his fight, but hey, it's cool. I gotta say, I really love how they streamlined this QTE from the original game because, I don't know, one thing I don't like that the Kiwami games do is that they just copy QTEs from other boss fights or they just keep the original animations of the QTE, which look really awkward. Uh, case in point, the final boss of this game, if there's a few QTEs that just do not look right because they just copy them from the original game, it's like, hey, I respect that you bring them from the original game, but they do not look right with these models. However, this is pretty much just taking the same QTE, but like updating it. This is how they should do all the QTEs, but you know, they, they don't do all of them like this, which is a bit of a shame, but whatever. I also really like how they updated the QTEs for when you meet him here, and I do love the return of the headbutt, which you will see shortly. <laughs> Shoot. 
What a great heat movement. Oh yeah, I forgot to mention. I did mention the thing about the Xbox controller, but then I went into a whole tangent about the PC version of this game and OBS. So let me get back to the Xbox controller. I don't know. When I'm mentioning like strategies, I'll just use like the the lingo of a, a PlayStation controller, but I did use an Xbox controller for most of these fights. So you'll see the Xbox prompts popping up, but I'm not going to refer to like any techniques or moves I do with the Xbox prompts just because I'm more used to talking about the PlayStation controller. And anyways, here's the stun gun patrol. Now this fight, I didn't actually no damage it in my original Yakuza 2 video because it's technically not a boss fight. Like in my Yakuza 2 video, I included a lot of fights which technically aren't boss fights just for the fun of it, but the stun gun patrol in the original game are such assholes that I was just like, you know what, they're not even a boss fight, I'm not gonna bother. It's a bit cheap on my part to skip them, but I did, so you know, whatever. But here they're back because they're not as, they're not as hard as they were in the original game. They're still a bit of a pain in the ass because they're a group fight and they tend to attack like <gasps> erratically and all that, but eh, I dealt with it. Oh yeah, I don't really remember the arena all that much from the original game as well because I don't remember if you can run onto the side of like this bridge here because I really love that about this uh, version, Kiwami 2's version here because I can just kind of like train them. I try to run around in circles, like trying to get behind them, trying to bait them to like run to me at a certain point. I really like that. This is a cool little stage. And you can throw them into the water like hypothetically if you like throw them in, in the right direction like you can throw them without doing the heat move however i never do that because it's a bit unreliable and like, trying to like position them while the enemies are trying to attack me is just not gonna happen uh we're gonna re actually return to this area for a future boss fight and there i'm just gonna do the heat move to get rid of the people because those people are aggressive <laughs> Oh, here's Tatoshi. This guy stole a tattoo. Really bad of him. Anyways, this guy, this fight was way harder to no damage than it has any right to be. Man, I hate this fight, and it's all back to... Man, some of the worst fights in this game is just a boss dude and then two enemy goons right beside them because the boss dude would just be really aggressive and aggro trying to constantly clip you. And then when you're trying to take out the boss dude, the other two guys are also aggro, but they don't run as much, but they'll still like clip you at one point. They'll just run up to you. You might be trying to do a combo and then suddenly, ooh, you get interrupted. This fight took over an hour <laughs> to be complete. It's, just, it's such an infuriating fight. And also, okay, so uh, attack stats. So yeah, I mean, for most of these fights, I kept my attack at 140. Which, you know, works for most fights. However, something I noticed that, you know, for boss fights, it's pretty satisfying to have lower attack. However, for these more standard enemies, it is such a nuisance. Like, they tank so much damage. I hate, I hate fighting these guys with such low attack. Like, they just tank damage. Like, you, you see, like, their smaller health bars, but they're not smaller. They, they take so much damage. It's so infuriating to deal with these guys. At least with a boss fight. You have the expectation that like their bot their health will be a little longer and it's a little more satisfying to see like the bigger health bar like slowly go down with these guys. Ah, it's so <laughs> Oh, and yeah, another annoying thing these guys do is they would just immediately go to the furniture and just kick it at me while I'm in the middle of a combo. Mm. Hate those guys. Anyways, here's the guy who... Oh, yeah, yeah, Kiwami 2 doesn't have the third area from the second game. I don't know how that happened, but anyways, we have a replacement fight for Arigato from the Kiwami, from Yakuza 2. And he is the old Shogi player. Shame he's not, you know, Arigato or whatever, but like... That old Shogi player is a decent little replacement, you know, he's not exactly as beefy as the guy from the 4, but he does put up somewhat of a challenge because he has a knife and he has a bit of weird ass super armor, which means he, I'm not really like confidently quick stepping him as much and also uh, Kaoru here kind of gets in the way sometimes, but she's also, she's pretty helpful. 
but you can kind of get in the way of my strategy sometimes. Yeah, so this guy's the, the people with knives are kind of weird because they can attack immediately or they can do a three, three, three step combo, which is easy to tiger drop. I do actually do the tiger drop here. Also, this is one of the only times that the song Sins of the Fathers plays. It's a little song that goes like. I don't know, it's just a bit weird that this is one of the only times it plays. <laughs> Boom, Tiger Drop, baby, and that ends the fight. And coming up, we're gonna have another fight where I upgraded my damage because why Why wouldn't you upgrade your damage for this? Ah, this fight is so... <sighs> okay, so we start the fight off with that little combo because that knocks away most of the enemies. And then what I'm trying to do is I'm trying to bait this guy into the stairway here so that I can Tiger Drop his attacks. But I only want to really Tiger Drop one attack he does where he goes shimmy shimmy on me. Because that, the last hit of that I can tiger drop like that, boom. And then I kind of taunt to build up heat because I need heat to deal with the groups around me. Because those groups also throw knives a lot of the times. So you can't really combo one. Because if you're comboing one guy, the other guy will throw a knife at you and clip you for damage. You do not want that. So pretty much I try eliminating like one them one by one by doing this little heat action. Which kind of, boom, takes them out. However, I don't have enough... My attack is at 201. I don't know, let me, let me review that. I, think I wrote it down somewhere. It, like pretty much my attack is either 201 or 247 for those really awful fights. Okay, for this one I put it at 201. So yeah, there we go. So then a little neat thing I learned is while these guys are attacking Kaoru over here, I can get off the staircase and taunt them from far away to build up heat. So when I build up heat, I go in for the kill with this heat move. This heat move is one of the most useful in the game. And then that doesn't immediately kill him, so I'm just kind of kicking him and quick step attacking, like quickly, so I can get get the get, get get out of dodge there, so I can keep taunting. But that guy came back with the table, so I kind of wait for him to go back to aggro my partner over there, so I can taunt here. This fight this is one of the most infuriating fights in the game. It was also one of the most infuriating fights in the original game for different reasons, but both of them are just <laughs> they're just they're just a group of dudes with knives. It's, oh man, come on. Now here is the replacement for Hiroshima in the original game, and also, gotta say, this fight's a bit disappointing. To be fair, he wasn't all that much of a fight in the original game, but at least he had the golf arena for like a stage. Like that stage was so unnecessarily cool for what a little fight this guy is, but now this guy has an arena more fitting of his stature, which is a massive shame. Like, come on, but he is he was kind of annoying because his moveset did not allow me to attack him that much. So I just wanted to spam into that little soda vending machine corner to just kind of deal with it. Oh, look, I go, whoa! <laughs> he buzzed away, oh man. But yeah, that fight was kind of nothing, and the arena is not as cool as the original game. Anyways, here is that bridge again, which we re revisit, and now we're going to get straight into business with the heat move to just immediately get rid of this... A uh, backstabbing purple guy. I still like him, but he backstabbed me. I don't like. I mean, I don't like that he backstabbed me, but he's still a pretty cool guy. He just needed the money. But okay, 
So yeah, right now I just kind of threw that guy into the river, and then I'm using the only like thing I could pick up to use as a weapon to use as a weapon. And now my strat here is I really want to build up heat so I can keep throwing guys into the river. I mean, there is a way to naturally throw guys into the river, but it's like it's not consistent. I don't. I mean, at least it's not. I don't know. I don't know of any consistent ways to really deal with it. I mean, but it is possible. Because I've done it before, but not in a no damage. I don't know if anyone wants to do a no damage where you throw the dudes into the river, that'd be really dope to see. But I don't know, one way I build up heat is that the taunt is really useful. And with my low heat bar, I can immediately go into the dragon mode. Which is really useful too, because if I had a full heat bar, these, <laughs> I mean, the taunts would go on for a lot longer. But okay, so anyways, uh, so yeah, I've made my time. I taunt, but the enemies usually run up to me, so I you can ta you can block immediately after you taunt, which is really useful. I like that addition. And the only real times that it can be a nuisance is that the enemies might just not attack you; they might grab you, which you can't block. So you know, sometimes like while well, in my attempts, I got screwed by that, but it works. But you don't want to rely on it too much because you know the enemies can grab you at any point. Really, <laughs> it depends on them. Woo, slide. Ooh, look at that dude on there. That's crazy. Boy. And now here is this guy from the Mahjong table place, except he doesn't have any tables or Mahjong. And we're just kind of here. Oh, yeah. I was kind of wrapped up talking about this game that I forgot to mention that the strap from the original Yakuza 2 with those Mahjong tables does not apply in that fight because I destroyed most of those tables. You just kind of have to rely on uh, those grab combos, which, I mean, Kiwami 2 ruined in a sense, as in in 1v1 fights, <laughs> like, damage can be negated really easily if they just decide to not be splat on the ground. If they hit a wall, like, your damage just does not hit, and that's extremely annoying. But it is useful for groups. It's just that it wasn't accommodated very well for the 1v1 fights. It, it tends to be kind of useless. I mean, and I think it's even more useless in Yakuza 6. I don't know, I had to like do a little no damage in that game at some point, but I don't really plan on doing that anytime soon. But yeah, the Mahjong table strap from Yakuza 2, where you just kick the tables to immediately kill the enemies, yeah, you can't do that in Kiwami 2, which, you know, different game and all, but, you know, I really like that strap from the original game. Now, why am I talking so much about another fight when I'm fighting this guy right now? I don't know, because this guy's kind of boring. <laughs> like, okay, he's just doing the knife, so, you know, whatever. Ooh, I do like how Woo! Yeah, okay, here are the big daddy tigers, baby. Woo! Just like the original game, they're, they're tricky. And you're pretty limited in your ways to deal with them. Oh. Hmm. You know, it's weird comparing the original Tiger's fight to this fight because in the original game, I would do full combos, while here I'm only doing a quick step attack to deal with them. However, I feel like this is the more active fight because in the original game, the openings were a lot more scarce because I was doing like full combos, while here, like those same attacks don't matter as much because I can just immediately dodge out of them with a quick step attack because doing combos on these guys does not work because remember how if you hit an enemy that blocks like your attack staggers well the tigers are always in this condition any attack you do against the tigers like staggers except for the quick step quick step attack which makes it really useful you just kind of go in tap go in tap and if you keep doing this enough it deals okay damage and the tigers health bars aren't that big however okay so one way i'm doing is that so once you bring a certain tiger's health bar down to a certain like point like you know below the yellow uh it'll do a quick little qte however i want to get both of their health bars really low so that dealing with uh dealing with the second tiger when it's all alone is a little bit easier because i know me he goes into red heat and then he has higher defense you know so I just kind of wanted to take down uh, both of them somewhat equally so that the fight will be a little less tedious later on. I do love how they updated the QTE for this fight, it's really dope. 
But yeah, like in the original game, the way I dealt with these guys was by doing full combos. But here, doing full combos is a death sentence. But to be fair, the original Tigers were also a death sentence. Like the Tigers are just like these weird ass boss fights which aren't really designed by your combats. Man, there's, a, there's, a way, there's a better way to describe this. Like, the tools you have in your combat arsenal are not the ones which you should be fighting these tigers with. These tigers are, like, they limit you so much because they do not conform to the rules of every other boss fight in the game. Because they're beasts! They're tigers! <laughs> I mean, you're, you're a dude fighting a tiger! Man, it's crazy! Like, it's such a dope concept, but the fight the fights kind of blow. However, I do enjoy the Kiwami 2 rendition better just because I can immediately dodge and quick out of there. Just feel a little more fair. A little less tedious than the original games. Oh yeah, so once the tiger goes into red heat here, it doesn't have any red heat, but is the his defense is higher. Uh, one thing you need to watch out for is that they'll do that little running attack where they kind of, you know, they run, turn around, run, turn around. They might do that once, they might do that twice, they might do that three times, and very rarely they might do that four times. But you just need to be careful because they can get you at any point. Oh yeah, it is actually possible to tiger drop these tigers. Uh, I've actually managed to do it in my attempts, however, it's inconsistent because there is w there is a certain attack which is really easy to tiger drop. It's when they jump and they like shoot their paw out at you to like kind of like slash you. You can tiger drop that. However, when they're just running, I have not figured out the timing for that. That that's just extremely weird. And the thing is, I just have no idea. I, I don't think they telegraph whether they're gonna do the jumping just normal attack or the jumping attack where they shoot their claw at you. I just don't really know if there's any differences in the telegraph to like figure out which attack is which. So you're just kind of screwed <laughs> when it comes to no damage unless you get really lucky and like tiger drop the punching fist like once and then the rest of the fight you'd be a little bit more safe because it's just weird. Here is Man in Black again and just like usual I make sure he does not rest because if he ever rests I get screwed. So, I make sure that I'm on top of my game immediately. I'll just let you all witness it. Well, but before I let you all witness it, this is actually one of the easier Man in Black fights because there are no walls. So you can't actually, so he can't actually splat against anything, which make this actually make it considerably easier to just kind of keep spamming him because at no point is he ever going to hit a wall and go, oops, I'm going to exit out of this like stunned state. Nope, you're on a train and you have invisible walls, which he will not splat against. So yeah, it's one of the easier fights. Okay, okay, I'll let you all win this in it. So yeah, my strat for the original fight and this fight aren't that different. In the original game, I just kind of did the ground pound move to take out most of his health bar, and here I did the dash punch spam. You know, different techniques, but same result. So anyways, uh, you'll be surprised to know I did not upgrade my attack at all for this fight. Which is a bit strange, because it's, it's one of the worst fights in the game too. To be fair, it was also re really annoying in Yakuza 2. And, but you know, in this game, he has that, that gun move that I was talking about that's really annoying and it's back. And in this attempt, I got extremely lucky. Like, you, the ideal way that this would go down is I would do the dash punch thing until he dies. However, at one point he just like gets out of it. However, I get so lucky that I was able to knock him back into it and I have zero idea why. Like, I guess I just dodged at the right time with the iframes aligned, like stars in the sky. And I just somehow did not get hit by the gun when I did a little beast charge. I know that I was spamming some more. And then I just got really lucky and just hit him exactly at the right time after he like pulled out his gun to knock him to the ground, which allowed me to do a heat move, which allows me to just get back into it. However, I would say the worst part of this fight is that once you know you manage to make the stars align, like in the sky, shooting stars, or whatever, you know, when you manage to like do this, and then you have to deal with these enemies, and then one of them just clips you because they're tele they don't telegraph their attacks. 
I just, I hate these enemies. I just do not telegraph their attacks. You know, you deal with that piece of shit gun boss fight, and now you have to deal with these enemies who just will just run up to you, clip you out of nowhere, and it's like, oh yeah, thank you, thank you, thank you. It's like, it sucks so much. I hate this fight. <laughs> Yeah, because the annoying thing about that gun, guys, when you're like, you know, dash spamming him, the enemies are active on your tail. They want to get your ass. So, you know, sometimes they might run up to you into a combo. Sometimes they'll kick a chair from afar, knocking you out of your momentum and also, you know, take, make you deal with them. You know, I, thought. I mean, that does kind of imply to them all that because they threw a chair on you, but... Yeah, so like doing the whole... Killing that police guy... Well, not killing. Kiri doesn't kill. You know, doesn't kill. So, you know, don't ignore that last part. He doesn't kill anyone. So, yeah. Like, taking that police guy out is hard enough. So, for this, like, random goon to just immediately knock you out of, like, doing the no damage is extremely annoying. I got really lucky there because if I did not parry that, I would have, like, died. And that parry was just kind of accidental. I was, try I was trying to block, but I just immediately blocked after, you know, he dodged my attack. Because sometimes when you're doing a combo, they'll dodge and you just kind of be stuck in your combo. And then, oops! Immediately, re immediate retaliation. Great. Ooh, a little smooth, a little smooth dodge cancel there, and okay, we are done with this fight. Surprisingly, this was one of the worst fights in the game. It's just a random dude and like two goons. Why is it such garbage? And you'll see that I decided to show exactly how I upgrade my attack power to 247. And now the reason that it's exactly 247 is because I don't want to upgrade my health or heat at all. However, to get to 300, you have to upgrade all the other stats and I'm just not gonna do that. So the highest I can get to with the equipment I had was 247 and I did it with this fight. And the way I won this fight is just, just bloody bonkers. Like, check this out. I do a heat action. This random lady comes out out of nowhere. She's just in the building and just kicks his ass for me. I have an idea of how this happened because this building is actually connected to the open world outside. So what I'm assuming happened is while I was spamming that guy with like punches, there was probably just some random lady walking right by that door. And at that exact moment, I had the ability to do that heat action and I did it. The probability of that occurring is so insane. How does this even happen? I, I mean, I'm not mad about that. I love that. But it's like, damn, how did that happen? That's crazy. Oh yeah, I hate this fight. It's such garbage because like you have two dudes with knives. You have that one boss fight who's always aggroing your ass. He has he has that one he has like that Yakuza move set where like you know that late game Yakuza move set with the enemies that just does not telegraph at all and he just attacks extremely quickly. Now here's another one. Here's Kuze again. You have a dude with a gun and a dude with a sword. This fight isn't that bad. However, I did upgrade my attack to okay, let me check my notes. I upgraded it to I believe 201. Yeah, I've created to 201 because it's not as bad as the previous fight, you know, despite returning to the same area as those Brother Kims, which were Brother... No, 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 no. The Jingwon Brothers. Uh, I think it was called Kim in the original, I don't know. But, uh, so yeah, uh, Kuze is a bit hard to deal with because there is one attack that you can Tiger Drop. I think I Tiger Dropped it beforehand. But trying to do the Beast Spam on him, like when he's doing those little, like, little, little one up, 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 down, up, down combo, those, those, he tends to dodge out of most of the time, like that. He doesn't hit him. However, I do manage to actually land, like, a Beast Punch on him at one point at the end of a certain combo, but when he's just doing that, it just doesn't work. However, those attacks are really nice to, uh... And then with that, sometimes when you land the beast punch, you're just like immobilized for some reason. Like, I don't know, maybe the attack was so beastly that you just had to stand still for a moment to witness its awe and glory. Which sucks, but whatever. However, like, those little up and down punches are pretty easy to tiger drop, which I like. However, yeah, at the end of that combo, I was finally able to do the whole beast grab thing, and I kind of slowed it down a bit. But I got really lucky, and I was able to land that last punch. Like, I, I screwed up, like, my strategy there, but, you know, it worked out. Surprisingly enough, I did not upgrade my damage at all for this part because it's actually not that bad. Well, okay. It's not as bad as the original game. The original game's version of this fight is garbage. And to be fair, this fight is also still garbage, but it's much easier to deal with. However, I hate this arena so much. <laughs> Like, I hate how Yuya's body just has an invisible barrier around it, so, you know, sometimes you'll be doing, like, you know, this combo boom right here, but if you're right next to his body, it just cancels out because he acts like a wall. Hate that. 
I hate how you just can't climb up the stairs that you could in the original game, because that would have been so useful, man. You just kind of stuck to this like, ground floor thing here. Pretty suck ass, if you ask me. Yeah, pretty much my strategy here was immediately get rid of the gun guy with like my extreme heat mode. Uh, bait out like this one guy's like really like kind of slow punch so I can tiger drop it because they're not easy. And you know, at some point take out the other guys because the other guys do need to go at some point. However, one annoying thing that happens is that the other enemies, you know, the dude with the sword, the dude with the knife, just keep showing up in front of the guy I want to tiger drop. They're being more aggro than the boss fight. Like, come on. Oh yeah, also this boss fight, this moveset is just extremely annoying to deal with. It's another one of those late game out because the movesets are just extremely quick and annoying for no reason and I hate it. And it's even worse than the Dragon Engine, not but I, I, I think you could have assumed that I would think it's worse than the Dragon Engine. And here I activate the cream heat mode, but I never get to make use of it. And you know, the perils of having a really short heat bar. Okay, I forget if I upgraded my attack for this fight. It's the Jinguan brothers again. However, there is indeed, I think this fight is relatively easier. No, 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 I actually did not upgrade my attack for this at all because this fight is actually easier than their first encounter because of multiple reasons. So, first off, I was able to like, their arena is much larger, which means I can do my dash punch, my dash punch spam a lot easier. The other guy could still get you, but it's, you know, I mean, you, you could, I mean, the way I did, I just kind of spammed him until he was in the bathroom, which led to the QTE, where I could kill him easily. And there are weapons on the ground, weapons like the sword. <laughs> I mean, I was not expecting this sword to be so OP, but it slices, it kills, it stuns. I love that sword so much. If I use sword throw all the boss fights, I could probably negate most of the challenge. I mean, to be fair, I'm kind of negating most of the challenge with dash punch. But the dash punch does require a little bit more skill than, say, I don't know, spamming Tiger Drop and, like, Kiwami 1. You know, you have to be on top of your game. You have to, like, keep pressing, like, you need to keep a consistent rhythm. You need to make sure they don't splat into any walls if walls are going to be an issue. Like, there is a, there's a quite a bit to consider to perform this technique. And when you don't have that much damage, it takes a while. So it gets tiring to keep pressing those buttons over and over. Like, when you have, like, 300 attack, it's not that hard. And here is Man in Black 3. <laughs> Once again, uh, it's extremely hard to do, like, as I was mentioning, Dash Punch takes some skill, and it takes some skill to do this. Because this guy could, at any moment, when you're near those walls, he could splat against them. And it's just insane. However, I, I somehow <laughs> did an attempt where he never splatted. And it's like, it's like the heavens were smiling with the stars and like, and we, yeah, 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 like, it was amazing. It was amazing. Like, how I was able to just even keep hitting this guy without him ever splatting. It was such a beautiful thing to witness. And here is Sword Ryuji with a really laid back intro compared to his badass intro in the original game. What a shame. But yeah, anyways, um, this is actually my favorite out of the Ryuji fights in this game, just like the original. Because, I mean, in, in the original game, like uh, when he has when Ryuji is just kind of without a sword, 
you can't really attack him much because he usually tends to break out of most things, which made that final boss fight drag on quite a bit when I wasn't using Tiger Drop. However, in this game, it's for the it's for hmm, opposite reasons. So the reason like I prefer the Sword Ryuji here to like the Fist Ryuji here is because the Fist Ryuji is just too easy. Like all his attacks just lead into like me spamming him hard. However, here he this, the Sword Ryuji here is a little more tricky to deal with. He's a bit more challenging. To be fair, if you have a higher attack stat, you can kind of negate most most challenge he has. And that's true of Kiwami too. Not really the boss fights. And you know, I mean, I lowered my attack stat, and it was a little bit, it was a bit more satisfying to deal with. Than I like this. Oh, uh, because like, these sword attacks are a bit more deadly, they have a bit of wider range, and he also has less opening, which I like. I mean, I mean, I, I like my boss fights to have openings, but you know, like, I don't know, Ryuji without his sword, I mean, he's a little too open, to be honest. <laughs> I don't know, when I was first fighting Ryuji with Red Heat here, I did not know how to approach him. However, I got really lucky with this one attack he did, and I was able to spam him for a bit, and then after that, I kind of tackled the fight by just hitting him with the Beast Punches, because I got kind of scared. I would redo this attempt, but he was tricky, and I kind of wanted to get to Tarada, because I knew Tarada would be a nightmare. And it was! We'll get to him! <laughs> He's up next! He's garbage! But anyways, yeah, this fight was really cool. I like it. So yeah, I kind of screwed up the spam there, and then I just don't proceed to do any more spam because I got scared. Cause some of these attacks you can spam, and then some other attacks he'll just re immediately retaliate. And I just wasn't sure which were which. Like that one attack where he does a really wide poke, you can uh, you can exploit that. But you know, when he does a really wide poke, it's kind of hard to like hone in on him and actually land the attack because he does this really step wide forward and then he kind of steps back a bit. So you usually kind of miss a little charge unless you're like really close to him. But if you're really close to him, the poke will probably just hit you. So you know, a bit of a hard attack to like get into. I hope you're not surprised to know that I raised my attack stat to 247 because this is the worst fight in the game! What were they thinking with this? Oh man, where to start with this guy? Everything about this guy is just garbage. Okay, so, okay, so, so, okay, so, this guy has a gun. Uh, our boy uh, Daijin Kim, Tarada, he has a gun. However, he has a submachine gun. So it's not just like you dodge and he shoots once. No, he shoots a lot of times. However, when he's shooting, he uh, he it's he's a hit scan enemy. He is a hit scan enemy and he shoots for multiple seconds, which means you can't dodge an attack. Once he starts shooting, it's going to hit you. So the way you have to tackle this fight is that you have to make sure he never once fires. Except that's extremely hard to deal with. Because really the only opening is when he's about to attack, you have to quick step attack him. However, the game's targeting system isn't sophisticated enough to distinguish between him and the five guys surrounding him. So sometimes you'll just quick step attack one of the five guys around him instead of actually quick stopping him. And then he'll just shoot you. You're screwed. You can't dodge that. You can't block that unless you get the tiger arm, which costs a million and six, which costs one million and six hundred yen, which, you know, you might have, you might not have when you get there. And, you know, if you don't want to which kind of, that kind of just screws like non-equipment runs of the, of the fight because then it's like, oh, well, if you don't have the equipment then you can't block the attack, so you have to make sure he never attacks if he, except when you want to make sure he doesn't attack the, the end, so one enemy might clip you, he might kick you away with that kick he does not telegraph because if you get close to him, like, okay, so like, ah, uh, Tirada has this one, his behavior is so annoying because he, like all, like all gun boss fights in this game, he has to be an asshole and have high defense so you can't combo him 
and if you try to combo him, he has that one ephemeral kick which just comes out of nowhere, immediately clips you, and kind of sends you away, and then he starts shooting again like a little bitch. I hate him so much. Ah! And then, oh man, and then there's the parts where he just glitches out. Like, there was this one time where I got him down, I did the QTE, which I clipped him to like feel the heat moment, and then I ran away from him because I need to deal with these enemies, because it is such a pain in the ass when you deal with Tarada, and then immediately afterwards, one of these assholes clips you, which means you have to redo Tarada all over again, it's like, oh man, oh, this fight is just such, so garbage, oh man. So yeah, anyways, okay, let's get back to Tarada. I don't, I, don't, I don't even know what I was saying about Tarada anymore. Oh, I hate this fight so much. So yeah, one of these assholes like clips you immediately out of nowhere when you spend like so much pain and suffering like dealing with Tarada. So yeah, that one glitch that happened was I went to go deal with these guys because you know I used my extreme heat mode to get rid of one of them, and then Tarada, even though he was in feel the heat stunned mo moment, he he couldn't do anything. He decided, you know, I'm just gonna shoot. Randomly, I'm not gonna give any indication that I'm gonna shoot like he literally shot my ass And then he went back to being stunned like he was stunned, but then he's like, uh, you know, fuck I'm just not gonna be stunned anymore, and he just shot me just to fuck with me I hate this guy so much his fight glitches out sometimes Sometimes he doesn't behave the way he does like if you quick step at, if you like dash punch him too early into the fight Instead of being like splatted to the ground He does the thing which the other enemies does where he's like in a stun state But sometimes if you wait a little bit he won't do that. It's like ah such an inconsistent garbage fight Oh, I'm so glad that's over. We're back to Ryuji. This guy's a lot easier so yeah, there really, there really isn't anything new with Ryuji, except that he has a, t a, t a crap ton more health than his original fight, which means the fight's gonna take a little longer, but it's pretty much the same strategy. I'm just gonna screw him over with Dash Punch. You know, so we start off, and boom, Dash Punch. So yeah, at the end of this combo, we can kind of continue with the dash punch spam, and then, you know, at the end of his whole, I'm gonna get you, and then he runs at you, you can kind of get him with the dash punch spam, you know, kind of explain that, you know, before, it's just now, it's gonna take a little longer to get a much bigger health bar, and, you know, I actually did this fight with 140 attack, you know, just because I kind of wanted to keep it epic, and, you know, kind of keep it similar in length to my Yakuza 2 original, like, attempt. You know, for different reasons and all that. You know, I think this guy's health bar when you have 140 attack is much longer than the original Ryuji's health bar. You know, whatever. Whatever. It, I, I still pretty like this fight. The music's great. The ambience is great. It's just, you know, he's a little bit easy. He's a bit easier than the original game. But then again, the original game's fight, I wouldn't exactly say copy it because it was a little bit infuriating de dealing with him. He's a little bit limited in the ways you approach him too. Like, I mean, without the tiger drop, the way I did it, just by grabbing his back. Because if you grab him from the front, he deals damage to you. So, you know, there's that. <laughs> Oh yeah, I guess I could talk about why I feel like there should be an option to lower your attack in Yakuza games because, especially like, I mean, at least in the newer ones, because, you know, in Yakuza 3, you don't really need to do that because your attack's already so low. Like in Yakuza 0, I especially want the ability to like make enemies, have like a mode where enemies have longer health bars because, like, on old, like my strategy in Yakuza 0 was I use rush style, I parry behind them and I just kind of spam them with like a full combo. You see, like, the reason I want a boss fight to have longer health bars is because that combo, like, the reason, like, I'm able to do it so effectively is because their, their health bars are so short that I managed to, like, kind of eliminate them before they reach, like, the end of a stage where they can maybe splat against the wall. Maybe, like, I might hit the wrong, like, part of their body, which will make them retaliate. 
if they have longer health bars, it's gonna be harder to like keep the combo going or keep stuff like this going. Well, I mean, with it, okay, this, this is different. <laughs> the thing happening in Kiwami Two is different. It's way, e it's, it's a bit easier to pull off than the thing in. Uh, actually, mm, I don't know which one's easier to pull off. I think this one's like a little harder because it requires like, a little bit more like commitment or whatever. But the thing in Zero, like, uh, <laughs> I don't even know anymore. But yeah, the thing in Zero, I feel will have a lot more credence. Like you know, using some of those more like well, cheap strategies. They're only cheap because the boss fight's health bars are like so you know low. Like they'd be a lot more uh, useful and like I think like you know not cheap if like health bars weren't so tiny and like yeah, because of Zero when you have like max attack and all that. So you know, just like a thought I had. Because I do like using some of these more advanced strategies instead of like the simple like I don't know parry combo stuff from like Yakuza 3 and stuff. Cause you know, I mean, in Yakuza 3 you don't really need to like have higher, like you don't need to raise the enemy health bars anymore because you know, you have a pretty simple way to like tackle fights. Anyways, we're done with all the Kiryu's boss fights except for the Amons, well the Amons will come later. We're here with Majima. This guy's a bit annoying. Like he's a fluke, but his attacks, like he just has a weird amount of hyper super armor when he's like shooting you. And he has that same ephemeric kick that he does not telegraph, which can kind of screw you over. However, in this attempt, this is actually something which I got while I was trying to no damage the fight that's coming up next. And I got it by accident. It's such a dope, like, uh, little... It's such a dope, like, encounter. It comes so fast, it's like 30 seconds. Like, I had a previous no damage attempt, which would, uh, took a little longer and wasn't as cool. And, okay, the reason I was able to do this was because every time you die against this guy, you have to fight the previous guy. Why? I was playing on hard, dog. Why can't you just start me at the beginning of this fight? What is wrong with you, Kiwami 2? Why are you like this? Oh, Kiwami 2 has just this weird-ass obsession with, like, starting you outside of boss arenas and stuff. Like, like yeah, I don't know, with the brother, with the Jinguan brothers, every time you die, you start off, you start at your last save point or like near the building where they are but for some random like nothing fight they'll start you at the beginning of that yeah they'll do that but for like actual important fights which will take a little bit more to like no damage they make you go through all this like inconvenience of entering the building we're skipping the cutscenes again and then doing it again it's like why why are you doing this like come on like i get it it's like if you fail you can go buy equipment i'll go heal up or whatever but like dude like come on if if i wanted that i might as well just load the last save like, come on man so anyways this fight this guy once again has the gun move the the, the gun style which most which couple boss fights in Kiwami do have which is very annoying to deal with and he is definitely more annoying to deal with when you're Majima who returns with his knife style a much more limited and clunky version of his knife style from Zero and with this boss fight he is especially limited the only real way to deal with this guy is just through your quick step attacks however it is somewhat thrilling because you know kind of like anticipating his attacks dodging at the right time then boom attacking him especially like near the end when you're like really getting close to like limiting yourself far it's pretty thrilling but a really limited fight and also another fight who just kind of doesn't telegraph what he does and also a little interesting development is that he's kind of copying the he's copying the fighting style from yakuza 3 that one red dude and the thing I noticed is that fighting that guy in Yakuza 3 isn't that annoying. He's relatively easy to deal with, you know, I mean, as long as he didn't have that dumb, dumbass crowd in his, like, final fight. But you bring that same fighting style into the Dragon Engine, and he's just a complete nuisance. However, I did it, I finished it, and I was pretty happy when I beat him, but whatever. Anyway, here are the Amones, and uh, here, this is gonna come as a little bit of a shock. I am fully upgraded for the Amones. Uh, all my stats are at 300, and the reason for that is because I just kinda went back to my PS4 save where I met up with the Amones. Like, I'm not gonna do all the side quests again just to meet them on the PC version, dog. I mean, I'm just gonna go back to the PS4 version, and on the PS4 version, I have all my stats maxed. So, here you can see what the dash punch is like when you have 300 attack, and yeah, they don't last at all. <laughs> uh, disclaimer, all the Amones are gonna go down like this. Oh man, 
Like, you know, I mean, they could relatively be dangerous, but you know, I, mean, I do this and I just negate them. And to be fair, I don't think all of them deserve to be negated like this, except for this guy. This guy's garbage. I hate this guy. Honestly, like, yeah, th th this is fair. This is completely fair to do to this guy. This guy's an asshole. Like, he does, he has no rights. The other fights, you know, they're a little bit cooler. They're a little bit cooler. You know, maybe I shouldn't have done this to them, but you know, I like doing this strategy, so I'm gonna do it. I don't really got a choice in the do they? <laughs> Here is Sango, who is definitely one of the better emotive fights in the original game, but you know, when I do this quick step attack, it kind of, you know, negates the differences between them. However, this guy does have a bit of a difference, because his rocket launcher keeps, like, pushing me away every time I do a quick step attack. Like, look at that, it's, it's like, knocking me away. It's such a weird-ass, like, sensation while you're playing. You know, you hit him, you're like, oh, you're, you're like, step back. It's like, whoa! <laughs> like, whoa! I mean, it's, it's really weird to hit him. It feels, it doesn't really feel like you're actually hitting him. It feels like you're, like, hitting, like, a, like, a, like a little, little, little body of air. It's like, whoa! <laughs> like, go step back. But yeah, anyways, it's gonna be. I, I let him with a little combo, however, I don't land the heavy at any point, but uh, there he goes. And here's Big Daddy Amon. Now, this is actually a new attempt, however, it's faster. And also, I'd say it's a much better attempt because I actually let him rest for a little bit so he can pull out his fire sword, and then I just spam him after that. <laughs> It's really funny. It's like, you know, you think the guy has a chance at like combating my strategy, but then I just immediately wreck him again, and he just kind of dies with his little fire sword. You know, he dies in a much cooler fashion, but it's like... <laughs> so yeah, see, I splat him against the wall, and now it's kind of over. Then I knock him into heat mode, and he has a fire sword. However, now, he's, I'm not gonna rest. He's going down. Now the great thing about doing this is that pretty much like negates their like second or third phases where they get a shield where your damage is like minuscule. So you can pretty much deal massive damage and skip any phase where their attacks get like ridiculously fast or where they're you know they have the shield where you can't really deal good damage to them unless you do like some heavy thing. I forgot. I think you need to land a tiger drop or something. Well, anyways, that's the end of the video. It's much long. It's a bit longer than my Yakuza 2 one, which I'm a little bit surprised by. But yeah, anyways, yeah, thanks for watching. Uh, the Yakuza Kenzin video will come at some point. I wouldn't expect it anytime soon. I still have to write the script.